I am Liz Wright. Welcome to Live Your Best Life. The only thing that matters now is living by the power of this wonderful new creation life. We're going to become an undefeatable force of radiating glory, and we are rising up strong now in this hour. Hello, family. Thank you for tuning in to this week's what's going to be just an amazing conversation with my beautiful friend, my special guest joining me for today's edition of Live Your Best Life, of course, with me, Liz Wright. And just be expectant. You're going to experience Jesus today. You're going to experience him. Just tune in to what he's saying to you through the content of our conversation. So my friend joining me for today is truly one of the most inspirational women that I know. She's just amazing. What has been produced through her true relationship, her authentic relationship with Jesus is amazing and it is very inspirational. So I'm just going to read you a little bit of her extremely impressive bio. She is a very humble woman and the Lord has just raised her up through her relationship with him and now she's really having huge impact. And so yeah, she is the vice president of original content with the global phenomenon, my official favorite television show of all time, <laughs> the groundbreaking TV series, The Chosen. And she is, I mean, obviously she's just, she's been raised up by the Lord into this position, starting from being in a volunteer job a few years back to now the influence and impact that she has. The the show is now watched over, it's been watched over 600 million times. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Across 175 countries. And so, and then her previous job, just very, very quickly, she was the head of faith and family content at MGM Studios, where she helped steer the exponential growth by 985%, resulting in 1.4 billion organic views per year across the network. And on and on it goes. She is a really accomplished lover of Jesus. It's my joy to welcome into the conversation with me today, the amazing Catherine Warnock. Catherine, welcome. Oh, thanks for having me, Liz. It's my favorite time to be with you. I woke up this morning and I was like, I get to be with Liz today. <laughs> So such a joy. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's always a joy to see you. I'm so excited to see what the, the Holy Spirit's going to do as we begin to have this conversation. So, okay, I want to jump off by asking you, obviously you have experienced a lot in your journey with Jesus and you've accomplished a lot. What has held you on course? Can you go there to begin with? Can you say, are there a few things that you have learned along the way that have truly kept you on course? Community, accountability that will you allow to give you the kick up the bum that you that we yeah. all need. Um, hearing his voice um, and allowing him to take me down into the prisons to truly be a Joseph. We all say, oh, we get excited when we hear that said over our lives or proclaimed over our lives, you're a Joseph. But we so often forget, you know, that's years of dungeons and years of learning how to operate with the Lord and in his open heaven, if you will, and um, to access his favor, to access his grace and his mercy and his fullness, no matter the circumstances. And so um, I've allowed him, people all see the glitz and the glamour of where I am now and they forget, oh, it's been 20 years of climbing through army crawling through the gutters of Hollywood um, yeah. to the proverbial top. And um, for me, that's I've allowed him to make a prison and a palace smell exactly the same. They smell the same to me. Wow. Um, the, the days might that's be profound. And I think that's what he's asking of us in this generation. He's going, I, I want a people that no matter the call on their life, like they're not preoccupied with that. I'm literally just every day. I'm not going, I'm going, God, I'll do whatever you ask me to do in Hollywood or business or where, whatever, whatever realm it might be. But would you just make me worthy of the church? Would you just make me worthy of being part of this body? I know you've done that through the cross, but would you mold me and shape me into such your image that I feel worthy of the church? Um, and so that can only happen if we truly are people that are like, I don't care where you put me. If I'm in a prison or I'm a palace, it should smell exactly the same. The fruits of the spirit, the access 
to the fullness of God should be exactly the same no matter where you're at. Gosh, that is absolutely profound, Catherine. The the prison and the palace smell exactly the same because on the inside we're just consumed with Jesus. We're sustained by his love, right? Wow. Can you share with us like an experience that you've gone through that where you really learned that and it became your authentic experience? Yeah. Um, so when I was, when God, I was a mission, I was a high school teacher that became a missionary. I was in Mozambique, Africa. I thought I would live there the rest of my life working in the dirt, cuddling babies. And God made it very clear. I want you to go to Hollywood. And I just thought he was hilarious, frankly. <laughs> I didn't have any gri- <laughs> like I am so untrained in the ways of media. It's hilarious, but God is God. And the multiplication of the talents are real. So, mm-hmm. but like God should do, the moment we get a call, he brings you as far away from the call as possible and says, now I'm going to get you ready. I'm going to, I'm going to work on your roots, your root system, or you will not survive. Mm-hmm. So I had many different seasons of what that character shaping uprooting looked like. And there was one season in particular, Liz, that was horrific. Um, It was the great, I call it like the greatest season prison of my life. And it was about two and a half years of torment. And it's before shame became the topic of Brene Brown, you know, and vulnerability. Shame was not Mm. talked about in the church. It was not it was not something that any of us understood. I, you know, I begged people to help equip me and help me overcome, you know, the stronghold of shame in my life. Very long story short, it was it was torment. It was it was the equivalent of a mental health crisis. Like I was in a corner, rocking back and forth, punching myself in the face. The self hatred was so profound, and the torment was so loud. Um, but I was supposed to be this faith leader who was climbing the ranks of Hollywood, but who behind the scenes marriage was falling apart. Frankly, it was just completely, it was this horrific season and nobody could help me. Pastors, counselors, nobody. Um, until I found one, um, William Young, the writer of the shack, I found one interview of him where he talked about how he had to horrifically walk out this journey of shame. And I felt in him oh my goodness, like a comrade in arms. And so I, yeah. every single day, listened to that interview just to give me hope. And And Holy Spirit was so kind to me in that season. He just said, I will be your teacher. I will be your comforter. I will teach you how to abide in this prison and let it be heaven. And bit by bit, he just gave me strategy, Liz. He gave me strategy and he just taught me how to walk out of this crippling shame. And at the end of it, the biggest key he gave me was, I want to teach you how to follow the rabbit trail of triggers and just like constantly asking why. Why did that trigger you? Why? Okay, so it triggered you because of A. So why did it trigger you because of A? Well, because of C. Okay. And then so I would just follow the rabbit trail. And it's a, a very amazing thing God taught me. Maybe we could talk about it another day. But mm. and it came down to one core central lie. A- after months of doing this strategy, this exercise months of this core, I I would always follow the rabbit trail back to the same core belief. And it was your piece of S-H-I-T. That was the core fundamental belief. And, you know, sorry that it involves a swear word, guys, but, you know. Uh, No, but it's important to be real. Thank you for being vulnerable. That's the lie. The lie was your piece of S-H-I-T. And um, so, great. Okay, now we have the key. We can start unraveling this and and putting in the truth. And the truth is who God has called me to be, who he's made me to be. And um, so that was the greatest, the most catalytic moment, because it was from that once I kind of with the Holy Spirit slayed that beast, if you will, or or eradicated that stronghold. It was a very long journey of about a year and a half full of signs and wonders and and the, the miraculous, but also huge torment. And he was faithful. And so now I feel like I so understand shame. I so understand the enemy that in Hollywood, I can maneuver. I can bypass shame. I can see when it's being activated. I can bypass it in conversations. In It's it's remarkable, Liz. So there is a clear differentiation of the Catherine before that season and the Catherine after that season. And I now sit in meetings and boardrooms and you name it, um, you know, helping to co-steer huge initiatives in, in media. And I often will sit there, Liz, and I will go, I am sitting here 
And the Catherine that believes she was a piece of SHIT could never sit here, would be tormented if she was sitting here and she would be desperate for man's approval. She would be desperate for all the fruits of shame, right? The fruits of shame, Mm -hmm. you know, performance, man's approval, control, you name it. And I was like, but I'm sitting here free. Wow. And I could just be a conduit for what he wants because self is not sitting here. I don't need anyone to see me or approve of me. Um, so long story, I know, but it was an important one. So it's super that's important. The key. Yeah. Super important because so many people struggle with it. It's so debilitating because we get hundreds and hundreds of communications in from people. And people are stressed out, as you know, and full of anxiety and full of shame and full of fear and fear of man manipulating them and blocking their ability to move forward in life. Yes. So when when that happened to you, what did you notice was the biggest difference? Like the internal you had completely changed and you were free. So what, what was it like on the inside of you after that? What was motivating you? And Because obviously shame had driven you for a long time. So how were you different? That's such a good question, Liz. So I went from never being able to say I'm sorry. I was never able to admit I'm wrong because that was failure to me. And I went from that to being able to just go, I'm allowed to be here. And I'm allowed to be in process. So what perfection led my life before, and it was all subconscious. I didn't know any of this. This was all just, you know, strongholds that I did not know existed in my life. I wasn't in disobedience. I wasn't actively operating in these things. Um, And so it's beliefs, it's beliefs, isn't it? Driving our lives, unconscious beliefs and programming. Yep. Absolutely. And so then skip ahead to, oh, I've, I fully am giving myself permission to be in process. And if I make a big goof or if I was humbled in a moment or I'm having a really hard day and I'm feeling the old man trying to like be my friend again, it's like, oh, permission to be in process. It's just a bad day. And I was never able to give myself that grace ever. Um, And so I I do, with so many women in particular, shame is like, oh, it's a foe, man. And it's this silent killer. It really is a silent killer. And I might not mean of like physical body, but in some people, yes. But I mean, it's it's a silent killer of, of, of calls on our life. And I really, I'm such a huge mega fan of coming alongside people and going, let's get this out of your life. Yeah, it's just brilliant. It's the game changer, isn't it? I mean, it's very, yeah, it's very clear and that's very helpful language. It is a silent killer. People suffer in silence trying to internally regulate and come out of that huge struggle. And if this is you right now, we're going to pray for you before the end of this conversation. Mm-hmm. We're going to pray for you yeah. because it's time for this stuff inside yeah. of us that's been driving us. Holy Spirit is washing, purifying, healing, transforming yes. the internal life of his people right now, I, I think at a rate that I've not seen before. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's very exciting. He's speeding things up so that we can be free and we can take our position to have from the intimacy, from with the freedom to actually begin to have an impact, which I know that you are super passionate mm-hmm. about seeing God's people move into position in the spheres of influence in life. So what what have you seen? I know that you've been having revelation around this and you've got a passion around the mountaintop revelation and to every, you know, the body of Christ being mobilized and equipped and healed and put in position. What have you seen in the heart of Jesus around this for now? In regards to shame or in regards to just influence it, when it comes to the body of Christ? Yeah, where, we, where why he's healing us and where he's taking us to now to have influence and impact. Honestly, I I really firmly believe that I'm a prototype of, of so many around the world that God is doing this with. Um, I just happen to be in a much more visual position, let's say, for this season of my life. But yeah. so for me, it's it's the honoring of a call on our lives in the prophetic, honoring it, but not ever putting it in the driver's seat. And wow. I, firm, I firmly believe God is rising up a people that are more concerned about being the body of Christ than achieving. And I really believe he's restoring that eternal focus 
because only a person that has eternal focus can, can go, whatever hand you put my plow to today, as he says in Ecclesiastes, I will do. Um, I'm not trying to have a social media following. I'm not trying to have a platform. I will do simply whatever you've put before me to do today. And that will look different for every season. And so I think there's a great hope and a great encouragement coming to the body saying, no matter the season, he is worthy of it all. And we have to stop being obsessed of where the end is because we already know the end and that needs to become our obsession. And so I see, I, I'm passionate about kind of eradicating the unhealthy focus on destiny and call that my generation, especially was raised in, in the church. Um, we were saturated in it. Um, well-meaning, mm-hmm. it was from a well-meaning standpoint, but it's not getting the job done and we need to get the job done. And I'm passionate about that, Liz. I don't know. It's so that's so brilliant. It's so healthy. It bring it brings us back to what's most important, doesn't it? Yes. To the union, to the relationship that we have with Jesus, being able to enjoy him and from that place flow in purpose. The purpose is the is the outworking, isn't it? The influence and impact we can have in life and we're predestined to have. Like you said, it's not that isn't the focus. He is the focus. And it flows out of authentic relationship and authentic identity. And the more we are healed from the shame and everything else that plagues us and the unconscious programming that has been driving our life, the more free we are to yes. enjoy him and to truly be fruitful in our lives. So powerful. It's so powerful. Okay. So for who Holy Spirit, wow, just felt Holy Spirit just move as a wave then. <laughs> he really wanted some of you to hear that. Like we can, we need to relax back into our relationship with him as the priority of our life, right? And to understand who we are and then fruitfulness, like it says in the scriptures, as we live in uni- conscious aware of our union with Jesus, conscious awareness, fruitfulness will begin to stream from our lives. Amen. So, so so powerful, so powerful, because we are here to bring the kingdom on earth, right? We are here predestined with purpose. We are here to be, to set culture and have impact and be influenced, influencing with the heart of God and the ways of his kingdom, but the doing not being the focus, the being being the focus. So brilliant. And you exemplify that. That is your walk, isn't it? That is your journey. And then the fruitfulness of your life is evident, is massive, but it is flowing from that deep, deep place of authentic intimacy that you have. I love that about you, Catherine. You're so authentic. You're so unapologetically real. It's brilliant. It's liberating. (laughs) Oh, thank you, Liz. Oh, I love it. It's a beautiful thing to get to the point where you're like, I love being me. Like, I love how you made me, Jesus. And there was a Catherine just to, just to, Bless people with hope. There was a Catherine that never could have even dreamed or imagined that that she would be able to say that one day. So I just want to encourage encourage everyone. Like, oh, the simplicity of the gospel. We are being restored to the simplicity of the gospel, and just like the simplicity of that gospel had earth shaking fruit and ramifications in Acts, like that's what we're being restored to. The simplicity of the gospel is where the power of God abides. And I'm, I'm so here for it. And I'm, oh, yeah. 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 I, I a hundred percent agree. That has been the journey of my life over the last year. Minimum is this simplifying down yes, back to the pure understanding of the gospel that the early church walked in, where it's yes. just who Holy Spirit Holy Spirit. Who? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Yes, Jesus. It's Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, oh my gosh. So can I just ask you, if people are really stuck right now in their walk with Jesus and they're tangled up in what's my pur- purpose, what's my mm-hmm. destiny, da, 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 you know, all the things that just tangle up, tangle us up on the inside. What would you suggest when you're mentoring people and walking alongside people? What would you suggest if they're stuck and they're just like, ugh, yeah. enough, I'm overwhelmed, I don't, I'm confused, everything's overwhelming and complicated. What do I do? What would you suggest? Gosh. What do you say to people? Three things immediately pop to mind. And it's in this was the greatest strategy when when every prison season I've been in Hebrews 11, uh, in the, in the amplified is my face at the amplified or message. Forgive me. I can't remember. And it's take a new grip with your weary hands and take a new stance on your wobbly legs. And I would just pray. I would like cry out and groan saying, 
you know, legs, you will take a new stance, arms, you will take a new grip. Like you will stay on the trail. That's the only thing he's asked of me to stay on the trail of obedience, to pick up my cross daily and follow him. He hasn't asked me to do anything, but stay on the trail and the trail will be my source. The trail will be my guidance. The trail will, you know, fire by night, cloud by day. Like that's the trail. And just to abide in him, that's enough. And that's enough. And like if the permission to be in process, you cannot allow yourself to go, that's enough. Just staying on the trail of obedience is enough. You can't do that unless you've given yourself permission to be in process. Um, Because if you haven't given yourself permission to be in process, you feel inadequate until you've achieved. But if I've stripped myself of achieving and I've just said, hey, I have permission to be in process. My only job in life is to worship him pick up my cross and follow him and allow him to do the rest. If I just keep saying yes, take a new grip with my weary hands and a new stance with my wobbly legs, then he is faithful to take that offering. And scripture shows us all the time, Liz, that he actually cares about his offering. Multiplication of the talents. He cares about our offering, our faithfulness. Cain, Abel, it's evident that he cares about the offering. And so I think if we became a people more concerned about our offering than our human effort um, and our doing, I think we would see immense pleasure poured out from heaven upon us. Oh my gosh. I can feel, it's enough. I can feel Holy Spirit. I can feel the weight of his presence on what you're saying Mm. and the peace that's coming to simplify back to that one focus in your life and for you to say that in the position that you're in and that's been the key that's hold you to held you to the trail is mm-hmm. just powerful because you are living proof that the gospel works that this is the truth it's literally living one day at a time in the simplicity of of relationship with Jesus so tell us a little bit what does it look like for you what does what does your life look like on a daily basis doing this in the midst of Crazyville, Arizona type life? <laughs> My gosh, <laughs> on <Carrie>. steroids. <laughs> hey, this is going to make people feel a lot Super better. Super practical keys. <laughs> so I was just talking to a friend, Lindsay Ryman, who you know well. Oh, is, I um, love Lindsay. Yes. Yesterday at lunch, and and I just was, I said, Lindsay, some seasons we have to allow the abiding in Jesus to look different. Some seasons it's, I'm abiding on the go. I'm diligent about it, but I'm abiding on the go. And that's just, he's teaching me in the busyness, how to abide and have my sustenance. Other seasons it's no hours a day. I need you. I need you carving out huge, massive chunks of time with me. That's the offering I'm asking in this season. Right now I feel him going, um, I need you in the word every single day. And I'm going to be very clear. That usually means about I get through a chapter a day. I read the word very slowly and I get very tired very fast. I just want to fall asleep. Like I'm being, I'm just, I'm trying to give people hope that I'm not yeah. living this holy monk life. I wish I could. Yeah. Um, but the demands of my life are, are are pretty insane. I have three, five and under at home. I travel at least twice a month globally. Um, I, I have the demands of my life are insanely real. And so for me, it's going, Jesus, I want to be in your presence, but you asked me to steward this responsibility. How do I balance that? And again, it's a lot of permission to be in process. It's a lot of days where I'm like, oh, wasn't in your presence, Lord. It's other days like yesterday where I just felt waves and waves of his grace and his glory throughout the entire chaotic day, teaching me how to structure the chaos. Um, And I Got to finish. I'm I'm really devouring Luke right now. Luke nine is my jam right now, guys. Um, yeah, I've lived so, in there for periods of time uh, too. Yes. I love it. I'm like <laughs> Luke. You're the sleeper man. <laughs> so um, I so just to give people hope, it doesn't. I I wish I could be David Hogan, and I've tried to be David Hogan. Yeah. We all want to be I, David Hogan. <laughs> maybe one day, David. Please, I would love that. Um, so I. Yeah, it's allowed to look. God isn't counting the minutes I spend with him. He's counting my offering Mm. and he's faithful to know, okay, you've got, you had an extra 10 minutes in your day, Catherine. Did you spend it on Instagram or did you spend it with me? 
half the time I fail and I spend it on Instagram. I'm not going to lie. And because my mind wants to numb out. And so I'm trying Mm. to discipline and press into discipline and go, Jesus, how do I, how do I do this? How do I, so I'm constantly learning. I'm constantly reassessing going, how do I give you a better offering? Jesus, like I'm obsessed with the offering, not from pressure performance, but from grace and ease. Um, He just makes you want more of him. He makes you want to give more. The more you're in your presence, the more you're like, I can, I want to do more Jesus. So just beautiful, just beautiful. It takes the pressure out of walking the Christian walk, doesn't it? It's just, Mm -hmm. and I love the fact that you're in relationship, you're in process with Jesus in the middle of your spiritual journey. You're saying, how do I simplify? What does this season look like? What does obedience look like? in this moment. And like you just said, he said at the moment to just be in the word with him. And then there's no condemnation anyway, when you're on Instagram instead, you know, he just helps us, doesn't he, to get a little bit more holy in our choices. And, and But when, but you're right, when, when we're with him, it's just worth it all, isn't it? And he empowers us and he gives us more grace. And then we fall more in love with him and just desire him even more. And yeah, our spiritual strength grows. Oh my gosh, I could talk to you for hours. It's just, you're such an inspiration. I love it. I love it. Your authenticity and the fruit of your life with him. Okay. Just the last few minutes that we've got, will you please pray for people? As I promised earlier, especially people who are, you know, stuck in that shame storm, that internal nightmare and torment that you walked and got free from. Yes. Hmm. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come and be the comforter. That you would teach people that feel like they are stuck in the abyss, not knowing their left hand from the right hand. It's too dark to see a path forward, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would be the comforter. That would be the greatest cry of my heart, that you would do what only you can do, that you would be the comforter, and that you would light a match and that you would send the way forward clear in their lives, that you'd give them the strategy, that you'd give them the perseverance and the strength, take a new grip with their weary hands and a new stance on their wobbly legs, and that you would give them even just, and I see some of you are so dry and you, you, you're asking to be filled up. And I hear Holy Spirit saying, nope, I just want them to ask for an ounce. I just want them to ask ask for an ounce, just to be filled an ounce. Like, don't despise small beginnings. He means it. And he declares it over your life that you're asking for a mountain when he's saying, hey, just a drop of oil will resurrect your life. Just a drop of oil. Of course, he wants to pour out more and more and more and more, but he's trying to make it um, bite-sized for you. Like, that's how kind he is. That's how good he is. He's saying, Don't cry out for the fullness of resurrection in a moment. Cry out for the drop of oil. Start there. Let your faith be nourished. Let your faith be encouraged and elevated. So I just really feel like God operates in strategies with me. So I pray that strategy over you, that permission to just ask for the drop of oil, knowing that he's the good God who wants to lavish you with barrels and barrels and barrels of oil overflowing so that rushing rivers will storm out of your belly. I ask Holy Spirit that you would hunt after these individuals, that you would free them from the prison that is shame, and that you would elevate them with eyes being raised into your glory, with the revelation of the eternity that they are working towards, that they are sprinting towards in the name of Jesus. I bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus, and I declare over you, you have permission to be in process. I declare it over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow. Yes. We agree. Amen. Amen. I'm like, I'll take that for myself, <laughs> Jesus. What a, what a strategy, a drop of oil. Like, oh, he mean my whole life has been built off of not despising small beginnings and instead believing that they will become huge mountains. Yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. he's faithful. Wow. He's faithful. <laughs> And in the end, he's the one that shines through our lives as we just humble ourselves, right? Just walk in obedience and let one who is God shine through our lives. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for freedom for everybody. We agree. Freedom, freedom, freedom. And a, a deepening, a deepening relational experience beyond anything that 
that everybody watching or listening right now has known this far. He really is. He's just, oh man, he's stripping away religious performance. He's stripping away pressure and stress and worry and concern and just liberating us to be our authentic expression and to enjoy yes. him, to love God and each other and just live authentically. And that is what will inspire the world. That's true leadership, isn't it? When we're yes. actually just walking authentically with him and then shining him through our simple steps of obedience, like you said, and just wherever you're at in life, yeah, he's there with you in it. He's there with you in it. So, amen. Oh, Catherine, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so you, much Liz. for being with it's us. It's been a joy. You're the Always. best. You're like my hair twin. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> oh you're amazing and guys thank you so much for giving us your precious time have the most beautiful week whatever you're doing yeah. in life he's there with you and there's so much more for you and i look forward to being with you again next monday god bless two years ago jesus spoke to me and he said if i would create a space for him he would come and what he has done in the last two years is absolutely incredible he birthed what is now known as the International Mentoring Community. Every week, myself, along with other international guest speakers, come on live and they pour in God's love and revelation. There is an activation anointing on my life. And so every single week, as we come together at the feet of Jesus, I have an environment in which I can impart this anointing onto you. He never, ever misses a week with us. He wants to take you into deeper experiences with him than you thought was even possible. So I want to personally invite you now to come and join us and sit at his feet with us.